This is Michael Wilson. We're looking at the encounter between Ananias and Saul. Let's do it, my friends. In the book of Acts, uh, chapter 9, we encounter one of the most transformative moments in the life of Saul, later known as the Apostle Paul, and Ananias, a faithful disciple of Jesus. The encounter epitomizes the power of faith, obedience, and the miraculous work of the Holy Spirit in the lives of believers. So here's what we read. Ananias departed and entered the house, and laying his hands on him, he said, Brother Saul, the Master Jesus who appeared to you on the road by which you came has sent me that you may receive your sight and be filled with the Holy Spirit. So imagine the scene. Saul is a zealous persecutor of Christians. He's having them arrested and killed. And he's on his way to Damascus with letters from the high priest authorizing him to arrest any followers of the way. Suddenly, a blinding light from heaven envelops him. And he hears a voice saying, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? Trembling and astonished, he asks, who are you, Lord? And the voice responds, I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting. So Saul, now blinded by the encounter, is led into Damascus by his companions. For three days, he remains without sight, neither eating nor drinking, wrestling with the profound implications of this encounter with the risen Messiah. Meanwhile, the Lord speaks to Ananias. He's a devout disciple, and he's residing in Damascus. God had it all planned out. So he instructs him to go to Saul and restore his sight and pray for him to receive the Holy Spirit. So Ananias, though initially hesitant, you can imagine, <laughs> due to Saul's notor notor notorious uh, reputation, he obeys the Lord's command without hesitation. He demonstrates remarkable faith and courage as he sets out to meet Saul, his persecutor. Upon entering the house where Saul is, is staying, Ananias lays his hand on him and speaks with authority. Brother Saul, the master Jesus who appeared to you on the road by which you came has sent me so that you may regain your sight and be filled with the Holy Spirit. And these words carried the weight of divine, divine commission, marking a pivotal moment, not only in Saul's life, but in the expansion of the early Christian movement. So Ananias' act of obedience and faithfulness is in fact very awe-inspiring. Despite the risk involved, he steps out in obedience to God's call, trusting in his power to bring about transformation. And he addresses Saul not as an enemy, but as a brother, a gesture of profound reconciliation and grace. So the significance of Ananias' words cannot be overstated. In calling Saul brother and acknowledging the divine encounter on the road to Damascus, he extends the hand of fellowship and offers Saul a pathway to redemption and restoration. So as Ananias speaks, scales fall from Saul's eyes, and he is filled with the Holy Spirit, just like everyone else in that time. In an instant, his physical sight is restored and more importantly, his spiritual eyes are open to the truth of Jesus as the Son of God and the Savior of the world. This encounter between Ananias and Saul exemplifies the boundless mercy and the transformative power of God. Like Ananias, we are called to be vessels of reconciliation, and we're called to be agents of transformation in a broken and divided world. We are called to extend grace to those who may seem undeserving, to speak life in the darkness, and to trust in the power of the Holy Spirit to bring about healing and renewal. So here's the bottom line. May the story of Ananias and of Saul inspire us to embrace our calling with boldness and humility, to walk in obedience to God's word, and to trust in his unfailing promises, and may we, like Ananias, be willing vessels through whom God's love and power can be made known to all the earth.
And that's some mighty good news, brothers and sisters.